Good morning, kindergarten artists. Today we are going to come back to our crayon rubbing artwork of leaves that we did last week. Um, and we are going to be adding another step to our artwork today. We're gonna to be watercolor painting right over our crayon rubbing to create a really cool effect called crayon resist. First, it's important that you get all set up for painting. So, you'll need your artwork that you did last week, of course. What I always like to do is I like to put a mat um, or another piece of paper uh, or maybe some newspaper, whatever you have hanging around underneath your artwork to protect the table surface where you're working. The next thing I do is to get a cup of water. Usually I use like an old yogurt container. Um, and only about half full is fine. You won't need a lot of water. Um, then you'll need your watercolor paints, of course. So here's what mine look like. Um, and I know you guys have your own set at home. Mine has the watercolor brush right in it. Now, what I wanna tell you about this brush is that a watercolor brush is a little bit different than a regular paint brush because the bristles are very, very soft. So this hairy part right here, those are called bristles. And on a brush for watercolor, they're very soft, and that's because they're meant for capturing large, large amounts of water. Um, water is the mating ingredient of watercolor paint, and it's what makes the paints work. All right, so I'll put my brush away. Now the other thing that I recommend having on hand is just a little bit of paper towel um, that you can use to clean up messes if they were to happen, or um, you know just to blot your brush to take some water off of it, and I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a second. Um, another thing that's great is if you have um, an apron or some type of a smock or even just an old shirt that you can turn into a paint shirt, that's always a good idea. Typically watercolors are washable so you don't have to worry too much, but you know, you never know when you're gonna have a big mess in art that's kind of part of the fun. Um, always a good idea to you know push back your sleeves so you don't drag your sleeves into your painting. And then you know what? I think we are set to go. So let's talk about our paints again. So what you'll notice before you start is that your paints are actually dry. So in order to activate the paints, you actually have to get them wet. So I'm just gonna take my brush and notice how that one now um, starts to look kind of glossy or shiny. That is showing you that it is ready to go. So that's how you activate the paints. Now when you want to change color, so let's say I didn't want to use orange, I want to use a different color, you always have to dip your brush in the water to wash off the brush. So it's kind of fun when you see the color go into the water. So every time you change colors, make sure that you're washing that brush. That way your colors won't get muddy looking. All right, next, what else do I wanna say? Oh, I've got a great little demo that I wanna show you. I'm just gonna flip over my paper to show you on the back. Now with watercolor paints, um, if you want, a really really dark color let's go back to that orange again if you want a really dark color you have to get lots of paint so let me show you on my artwork see how that's a nice bright orange really stands out jumps off the paper now that has a lot of paint in it but if I want a lighter color all I have to do is add more water so watch this I'm just gonna go right to my water container and I'm just gonna dip my brush in okay and then if I get too much water I can brush it on the side now I'm gonna take my brush and compare the two oranges that one got a little bit lighter I'm gonna take off even more now I'm not even getting more paint and look at how light my orange is getting now so the amount of water you have on your brush or the amount of paint will tell you or determine your darkness of your color or your lightness of your color. Now sometimes you have too much water on your brush and you need to get some of it off. So that's where our paper towel comes in. This is called blotting where you can just take your brush and get some of that water off so that then you can go back to your painting. So keep that paper towel handy for blotting. All right, 
So I've got my brushes. Now what I want to talk about is our crayon. So I'm going to run over and grab mine because I forgot them on my other table. Okay, thanks for your patience. So crayons are on the other side of our paper from our crayon rubbing, of course. Um, but what I want to show you that's really cool about crayons is that they don't allow paint to soak into them. So here's a crayon that I've got right here. Um, and what's great about them is that they're made of waxes and oils um, that make them kind of glide across the paper and give you that vibrant color that you're used to when you color with crayons. Now, when I draw something, so here's a little heart and I'm just gonna very quickly, you know, make some zigzaggy lines to kind of color it in. Um, these waxes and oils do not absorb or soak in water. So what I like to tell my students is putting crayons down on your paper is almost like creating a little raincoat in that spot. It can't soak in. So think about when you go out in the rain with a raincoat on. The water hits your raincoat, it beads up into little beads of water, and then it drips off. It doesn't soak in. Crayons make a little raincoat right here on your paper when you use them so that the paint can't soak in. Now, let me prove that to you. I'm gonna take my color again, grab a little bit of orange, and now I'm gonna go right over that little heart that I created, and instead of coloring it up, instead of covering it up, excuse me, it's just gonna soak into the areas where there is no crayon. So see how the crayon still stands out? That is what crayon resist is all about. And it's a really fun, easy technique when you're using crayons and watercolors together. So speaking of that, I'm gonna flip my paper over and here is my amazing crayon rubbing from last week and I'm gonna start painting it. So what we're gonna do, you can use whatever colors you want. I've been using orange a lot, so I think I'm gonna switch to a different color here. I'm gonna do some red. So I'm gonna grab my red, activate it by getting it wet, and then I'm just going to begin my painting. So I'm gonna start right here at the top and just start to paint a little section with this color. And you can decide where to put your colors, what colors to use, and just allow your brush to kind of glide. I'm gonna switch colors now, so I'm washing my brush off. I'm gonna go to, ooh, I really like this dark red violet here that I'm gonna do. I think I'll go over into this corner. It's kind of like a yellowy green over here, and I think it would look really good with this red violet right on top of it. Now, I want that color to get a little bit darker, so I'm gonna come back and get just more paint instead of more water. So right now, that is mostly paint, less water. That's making my colors really show up. Now I'm gonna grab a different color, and I'm gonna go for another dark color. I think I'll go for purple this time. And I'm just going to fill in those areas. Now when the purple gets close to the red violet, you'll notice that those colors are starting to mix together and I really like that. So I'm gonna let that just kind of happen. Now, I'm gonna leave the purple right there and I'm gonna go to fill in another section. I think I will go back to my orange this time. And I'm gonna bring the orange right over to this corner. Good thing I have that mat there because I just went off the edge of my paper. All right, I'm gonna grab a little bit more maybe do the orange around my blue leaf here. I think that will make it really stand out. Blue and orange have a way of doing that when they're put together. All right, now I'm gonna go to, oh, I'm gonna try out some black. This is something really fun to do with the crayon resist. I'm gonna use a little bit of black and try to get my, my brush really going with black here and then watch this. <gasps> it almost makes that yellowy green jump right off the paper and the orange too, it really makes it stand out because it's such a dark color against the lighter color. So when you put two different colors together, it makes them really stand out. All right, I'm gonna go to a different color now. 
Maybe I'll do some blue. I haven't done any blue yet. And I'll come right down in this corner. And I want that color to get darker again. So I'm gonna add more paint and just again, allow it to glide. I'm gonna come right up here and join my black. Now I've got just a little bit more to paint here. So I'm gonna keep on going in all the white areas. I think I'll change now to a blue green color. See how this looks. Oh, I love it. It's like a teal or a turquoise color. I'm gonna grab more of that and less water. See if I can darken up the color a little bit. Really beautiful. So I'm just getting all of my white. Almost there. Now I think I will go to some green because I haven't used green yet. All right, now I'm gonna come over here with my green. Maybe add a little bit more. This time I came back for more paint so that it will be a little bit darker. I think I'm gonna add some orange back to it over my black leaf here. And then right off the edge. And now I think my painting is all done. So just scan the artwork to see if you have any white left behind. And then, um, you know, when you're all finished, let your artwork sit somewhere um, so that it can dry fully. And when you're done, you're gonna have this really beautiful, amazing artwork with all kinds of leaf textures showing that crayon resist technique. Just beautiful. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I will be in touch with another remote art project next week. Hope you're all doing well. Can't wait to see your artwork. So please take photos of what you're doing and post to Seesaw or send them to me um, through email, H-L-A-N-G-L-A-I-S at AOS94.org. Thanks a lot, everyone. Take care.